The largest mammal that walks the earth, standing three to four meters high, weighing up to 6,000 kilograms with a natural lifespan of 60 years. What have we let them do to the elephant? Shunted from town to town as a freak show. It seems like these that have created ever increasing opposition to animals in circuses. Jan Kremer director of the Animals Defenders, explains. People see animals in circuses now as a relic of the past from a time when people knew no better. Everyone is much more aware now of how animals should live. And although some parents still take their children to the circus through some misplaced sense of nostalgia, certainly our members don't want to see animals in circuses. This change in attitudes has led many councils to ban animal circuses from their land and organizations like the Animals Defenders and the International Animal Welfare Alliance are now calling for legislation to prohibit animal circuses. Pat Simpson is director of the International Animal Welfare Alliance. I've seen many disturbing things. I've seen elephants shackled uh, by one leg, two leg, two legs. I've seen big cats caged. Uh, showing stereotype behavior, you know, the pacing up and down. I've seen elephants weaving and bobbing. I've seen bears that have been confined in beast wagons showing the same sort of stereotype behavior. Many things, really. Circus animals spend almost all of their lives on the move from one makeshift encampment to another. For nine to ten months a year, they tour, setting up on whatever land is available with the most basic living conditions. Bill Jordan was a vet to Chester Zoo for 16 years, during which time he attended to most of the major circuses in England. Later he lived in Africa, where he worked with animals in the wild. At present, he is secretary of the veterinary group of the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Uh, in the wild, uh, an elephant will travel up to 20 miles a day, uh, they are in uh, maternal groups, uh, matriarchal groups they're called, with uh, several older females and then younger uh, animals along with them. They greet each other by putting their trunks in each other's mouths. From time to time they stroke each other with a trunk. Uh, several times a day they have dust baths or, or mud baths, uh, and they're continually on the move, continually eating. In fact, an elephant is moving almost 18 hours a day and covers a, a, big, a, a large distance. In the circus, of course, the contrast couldn't be greater. Here you have animals that are t chained up most of their time. They're chained up on, uh, on a solid standing, sometimes it's metal, chained with, uh, by one front leg and one back leg, and all they can do is swing their heads from side to side or stand up and lie down. The only relief circus elephants get from their chains is when they appear in the ring or if they're allowed into a small, barren, electric fenced enclosure measuring just a few meters across. When this circus visited town, the elephants spent several hours in the enclosure on the first day. By the time the circus moved on a few days later, the enclosure had only been used once. Big cats, such as lions, tigers, cougars, panthers and leopards, spend 90% of their time in beast wagons, small cages on the backs of lorries. Occasionally they are provided with a so-called exercise cage, a fenced enclosure of just a few square meters, bereft of anything of any interest for the animals. Bears are neophilic animals. They are fascinated by the new and are always investigating things. 
In the wild, they are wanderers, living a solitary and peaceful life. A normal wander for a polar bear is about 12 miles. In the circus, it is the beast wagon for most of the time, with nothing new to investigate and nowhere to wander. Here, different bears have been closely confined together, something quite alien to their nature. Just as circuses manage to confine naturally solitary animals in groups, so they are equally likely to isolate animals that would naturally live in herds. For example, this zebra, or this camel, or this giraffe, or this llama, all penned or tethered, alone and with no real exercise. In the wild, hippos are social animals, and spend most of their time in water. Not so for this wretched animal on tour with the circus. Bill Jordan. Uh, it's got a, a bath at the end, which I very much doubt that it could get into. Now, hippos need to be in water most of the time. Uh, they have a very delicate skin that's uh, easily sunburned, easily dries out and uh, flakes, uh, and, and they can suffer. Uh, they need to be in water most of the time, and I don't see how a circus can possibly provide that facility for them. Domestic animals fare little or no better. Few who visit the circus and see the horses tethered in their pens realize that what you see is what they get, with no exercise apart from the time in the ring to perform or rehearse. Pat Simpson. I observed the horses that are continually tethered facing the wall or even in individual stalls. The only time they move out from that stall or facing that wall is the time when they're performing in the ring and then they're taken back to exactly the same position. Some dogs may live with their trainers, but if there is a large troop, they are more likely to be caged or tied up. Domestic cats are confined to colonies. After a few days in one location, the animals are packed up and moved, enduring all the stress this must cause. They may be confined to their transporters for 10 to 12 hours at a time if their stable tents are not erected the same day. Inside the beast wagons, with their sides closed for travel, there is poor light and ventilation. With all of this to endure, it is little wonder that some of these animals go out of their minds. Bill Jordan. This is uh, typical stereotypic behavior or displacement activity caused by distress and frustration. This animal is alone in the circus. It's got none of its species uh, with it. And it doesn't have enough exercise. Its biological needs are frustrated. And uh, this is the result. It seems extraordinary that the law can allow this, but it does. The circuses in the UK are licensed under the Performing Animals Regulations Act of 1925, which requires circus exhibitors and animal tamers to be registered by county councils. Although county council vets and police officers can inspect them, very few would be qualified to do so. The RSPCA have no right of entry. Jan Creamer. Well, circuses are exempt from the 1981 Zoo Licensing Act. And this means that they don't have to adhere to the normal standards of either animal welfare or public safety. In fact, if they were to try to con conform to those standards, they would not be able to travel with animals. But they're also exempt from the Dangerous Wild Animals Act and the Wildlife and Countryside Act. And this is why over 180 responsible councils have banned circuses from their land. If life for animals on the road with circuses is bad, it may be even worse for the two or three months of the year that they spend in winter quarters. The luckier ones may go to a zoo, others to a circus-owned winter holding unit, warehoused, waiting for use. A survey found 70% of animals in winter quarters were not in peak condition, 
housing was often inadequate and animals are often confined in buildings for the entire time. It is hard to believe that this ramshackle collection of barns and beast wagons is not only a winter holding but also an official circus animal quarantine centre. Here, animals that traverse the globe, visiting Japan, the USA and throughout Europe may be held. Under their licence, under the 1925 Performing Animals Regulations, a circus can have as many winter holding centres as they wish, with apparently little or no control. The RSPCA has no powers of entry into these premises and would not normally visit them unless a particular reason arose. Consequently, they are subject to no routine inspections by any animal welfare body to assess living conditions for the animals. It is quite clear that many circus holding centres would not pass the standards laid down by the Zoo Licensing Act 1981. Like travelling circuses, most have no secondary containment for the animals in the event of an escape. Bill Jordan. I've never been to see these winter quarters, but you can see from uh, these pictures that uh, they're far from ideal. In fact, they're dr absolutely dreadful. Uh, these uh, conditions would never be allowed under the Zoo Licensing Act. I doubt if they would ever have been allowed even in the Victorian era. Circuses say that they can only train animals through kindness and reward. Training is in fact a combination of punishment and reward. The use of cracking whips to reinforce commands in the ring and sharp sticks and goads is testimony to this. Whilst some tricks performed by circus animals are loosely based on natural behaviour, many are clearly not and demand a far greater degree of coercion, such as forcing a tiger to jump through a ring of fire. A survey revealed that the big cats did not like going into the ring, so almost half of the time they were forced in by a broom handle being poked into their wagons. A tasseled stick, being used by a trainer in the ring, deserves closer scrutiny, which shows it to be a slightly more sinister object with a metal hook concealed by the tassels. With this, the trainer is able to encourage the elephant to lift its foot higher. A llama is prepared for the ring and is repeatedly hit about the head. The animal shakes its head after one vicious punch. Then, as he leaves, the circus worker beats the animal with a stick, just for good measure. Some circuses challenge people to come and see training sessions to prove there is no cruelty. In fact, these are simply daily rehearsals conducted on the road. Any new training takes place before the animals go on tour. Somewhere like this, well away from public scrutiny. In their defence, it has been said that circuses contribute to conservation. Bill Jordan. Circuses have absolutely no role to play in conservation. First of all, uh, most of the animals they have are not endangered. Uh, secondly, they keep uh, mostly one sex, so they're unable to breed. Even the few that do breed can never be returned to the wild, uh, if there is any wild for them to go to. Certainly the, the cats would have to be trained how to hunt and this for a circus animal would be almost impossible. They're imprinted uh, on human beings so they'd be a danger to tourists in those foreign countries where they were returned to. Uh, it's just a nonsense to say that they are conserving animals. Some argue that they play an educational role but Jan Creamer questions what they actually teach. To say that circuses play any educational role whatsoever is absolute nonsense. What they're actually teaching is entirely the wrong view of animals, the use of animals as an object of entertainment. And what people nowadays, especially our members, are much more interested in seeing is animals in their natural environment and learning about their lifestyle and their habits. Their final defence is that of tradition, but then the same defence 
could have once been applied to bear baiting in this country. It is not so much that there are good and bad animal circuses, but under the circumstances it is impossible to adequately attend to the animal's needs. As long as we allow animals in circuses, we condone these miserable conditions which would not even be allowed in the worst zoo. We condone the training and control of animals with whips, sharp sticks and goads, and the portrayal of magnificent animals as figures of fun.